Good morning. You're listening to Senior Scene on your hometown station, 1430 WNAV. I'm Joshua Killian, social media producer with the Anne Arundel County Department of Aging and Disabilities. And today my guest is Sarah Lewis, Special Agent at the Federal Bureau of Investigations Baltimore Field Office. Welcome to Senior Scene, Special Agent Lewis. Thanks for having me here today, Josh. Uh, last time that we spoke, you helped inform and warn our listeners about the dangers of romance scams. You're back again today to tell us about another type of scam affecting older adults in our community. Is that right? That's correct. Today, I was hoping to educate listeners on tech fraud scams. And uh, that's, that's interesting. I've never heard of a tech fraud scam before. For our listeners who may not be as familiar, could you tell us a bit about them and what do they look like and how do they take place? Sure. So with a tech fraud scam, victims are usually contacted via email, maybe a pop-up window or a phone call from someone pretending to be a tech company, such as Norton Antivirus or McAfee, QuickBooks. They're told that they are owed a rebate or a refund for some reason, whether it's time for them to renew, whether they're getting a refund because supposedly their service is no longer working. And the scammer will then ask the, the victim to remote access into their computer so that they can log onto their banking account and they can make a direct deposit of that refund into the bank account. And this, the victim will usually see money being deposited into their checking account and believe that McAfee or Norton is giving them money. However, what's really happening is the scammer is taking money from another one of their accounts, such as a savings account or a money market account or a line of credit and using their own money to deposit into their checking account. The second thing that's happening is instead of being refunded the amount that they are told they owed, such as you know $299, when they go to enter the amount into the deposit box, the scammer will highly inflate that amount and maybe make it $29,900. And the next step that will happen after this money is put into the checking account, again, it's the victim's own money, is the scammer will then beg them to refund the balance back to Norton or to McAfee so that they don't lose their job or they don't get in trouble. There's always um, a very detailed explanation. And he will ask the victim to send the money um, in a couple of different ways. Uh, typically, it's a wire transfer that goes overseas. Um, sometimes it's virtual currency. Sometimes it's in the form of gift cards. And sometimes they will ask the victim to mail cash. So just to kind of repeat, you'll be receive some type of communication from a tech fraud company, which is somebody posing as the tech fraud company. They'll ask you to get remote access to your banking information to give you a deposit. They will take your own money from a different account, put it into your checking account um, way over what they told you you would be paid and then ask you to take the difference and return it to them in different forms. Well, can you uh, tell us more about uh, how tech fraud schemes are affecting the people and how does it affect our state and our community and as well as its residents? Sure, so it seems like the highest population of people that are becoming victims of this tech fraud scam is the over 60 population. And if you um, take the time to look at the PowerPoint after we're done talking today, you can see in, I believe it was 2021, that for tech support scams, there were 13,900 complaints with IC3.gov, which is also included in the PowerPoint. And that's the mechanism that victims can use to go and file a complaint. Again, it's IC3.gov. Whereas last time we talked about romance scams and the number of victims was about half of that that had filed reports in that year. So tech support scams are definitely rising um, in the amount of victims that are reporting it. And we have no idea how many victims there are that are out there that go unreported. Uh, there's usually high dollar amounts of loss and the money goes typically overseas, whether it's through these wire transfers or virtual currency or with the cash or the gift card purchase, a lot of times what we're seeing is people that start out as victims um, form relationships with these scammers over time by talking to them and um, texting with them. And they start to trust these people and truly believe that they are 
employees of the tech fraud companies and they start assisting them by becoming what we call here at the FBI a money mule. And a money mule is somebody that receives money or gift cards or some type of currency on behalf of someone else and then sends that money themselves. So they're separating um, the victim from the scammer by adding this person in the middle that's helping to direct money. So when that happens, a lot of times it's hard to retrieve the money or trace the money because it's overseas or it's gone to three or four people before it gets to the scammer. So it's hard to retrieve that money. And typically in the population that are 60 and over, they're at a point in their life where they're retiring and their income has changed from when they were prime time working. And it's very hard for them to recover financially if they're losing 10, 20, $30,000. I have a victim right now who in the last six months lost $2 million. And it's very hard to recover financially from that at that stage in your life. So it's very devastating to the population and it's um, really affecting a lot of people right now. And that's why I wanted to get the word out today about this tech fraud scam. Well, now that we know what a tech, tech fraud scam is and who it targets and what they're after and um, how they go about it, can you tell us how we could recognize and avoid them so that we don't become a victim ourselves? Sure. So if you receive, which I receive these myself all the time, but if you receive an email from McAfee or Norton, look at the email address and you know try to validate that it's legitimate. I always just delete these emails. And I know that if I have McAfee or Norton service, I would just look up on Google for the 1-800 number for the company in the United States, and I would call them direct. I would not click on the email. I would not call the number. I would not click on the pop-up box. I would just delete those and then call the company itself that you have the service with and speak to somebody who truly works for the company. I would also never, never, never allow anyone to remote access your computer. No McAfee or Norton or Quicken Books employee is ever going to ask you to remote access your bank information. So that's definitely a red flag. One of the things that I'm commonly told by victims is that the scammers, after they've remote access into their um, bank accounts, will tell the victims to not check their bank accounts or talk to the bank because it will mess up the refund process or whatever their excuse is. I would ask people to always check your bank accounts. And if you have questions, call the bank employees. They are trained on how to deal with these scams. They can help you retrieve your money if for some reason money has been sent. And a lot of times these scammers are asking victims to lie to the bank. McAfee and Norton would never ask you to lie to the bank. They would never ask you to stay on the phone while you're at the bank so they can listen to your conversation. These are all red flags um, that I would be prepared for if I believe I'm getting scammed. Also, if McAfee or Norton overpaid a victim for some reason, they would never ask them to send a wire transfer overseas or return the money via a gift card or virtual currency like Bitcoin. Those are all huge red flags that you are in a scam. So whether it's the instructions they're giving you, whether it's asking them to remote access to the computer, they're asking you to refund the money in a peculiar way. Those are all things that people can look out for. But again, my practice is just delete the emails, delete the pop-ups. And if you believe that you have an issue with McAfee or Norton or any of those tech companies, call them directly at a very commonly used phone number and just be very careful about who you communicate with. Well, could you tell us more about what the FBI and specifically the Baltimore field office are doing to help prevent older adults from becoming victims of a tech fraud scheme? Sure. So one of the things that we are doing on my squad, which I work on the financial crime squad here, is we try to do a lot of what I'm doing with you is outreach, liaison, public service announcements, um, where we get out in the community. My boss is almost, you know, every day, every other day is out speaking with the AARP. He's out speaking with different banking institutions. And we're really trying to form a liaison working group um, 
in the community so that we can educate people and teach them about the scams that are coming out and how not to be a victim. We're also um, working with ic3.gov, which again is the vehicle for people to file complaints once they've been scammed or if they're suspicious of a scam. And we are combing through statistics. We are looking for cases that we can open up with Maryland-based victims that possibly have common targets or common subjects um, to see how we can help people in this AOR, or I'm sorry, this area of responsibility. And we also try to do a lot of liaisoning with overseas partners. A lot of times these tech fraud scams, we're seeing the people that are receiving the money are located in India or other foreign countries. So we're trying to establish, I know specifically on my squad, um, working relationships with law enforcement over in these countries to try to fight this crime. Well, we've uh, gotten a lot of really great information today. Um, and thank you for that. Could you tell us like, what's the one thing you'd really like our listeners to take away from today's talk? Um, the first thing I would like to ask is if you ever suspect that something is a scam, it probably is. If you have questions, you can call the local FBI office here in Baltimore. There's also an Annapolis office of the FBI. There's somebody that is available every day, a special agent, a trained law enforcement officer, who's available to talk to the public, answer questions, give them resources, and just be there as somebody to explain all of these scams. So firstly, I would say, you know, don't feel like it's a big deal to call us. That's why we're here. We would much rather talk to you and prevent a scam than have to talk to you months later when you've lost a lot of money. And secondly, I would say, just be very suspicious of any type of communication that you receive. Um, via phone or email or pop-up window where people are representing themselves from a tech fraud company. So that would be my two points of advice. Well, Special Agent Lewis, I wanted to thank you so much for coming on the show today to tell all of our listeners about the dangers of tech fraud scams. Absolutely, Josh. I'm so grateful to be here. Thank you for having me. And if there's anything I can do, to help your listeners or any ideas from the community of how we can prevent these scams. Um, again, please reach out. I'm always here for help. Thank you so much. If, uh, if you have any questions about today's show or if you're interested in any of our programs, please feel free to contact the Department of Aging Disabilities at 410-222-4257 or visit us online. We also encourage everyone to register for our Senior Activity Center program, which can be found on our website, aacounty.org forward slash senior hyphen center. Please remember to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube at Arundel Seniors. This has been Joshua Killiam, social media producer with the Anne Arundel County Department of Aging Disabilities, and you've been listening to Senior Scene on your hometown station, 1430 WNAV.